Jim Brinstein. Yes. Hi, Tim Dodd. Nice to meet you. Good to see you, Tim. Thank you so much for uh, taking a minute to talk with me. You bet. We're in a pretty cool place to be able to have a conversation here. That's right. <laughs> At the Mission Control SpaceX headquarters. It pretty is. Pretty exciting place. It's it, it is amazing. And uh, we, we are on the cusp of launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil for the first time since the retirement of the space shuttle in yeah. 2011. Yeah. And SpaceX is one of those partners that's gonna make it happen, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and so first off, let me, let me compliment you on not only your enthusiasm, your knowledge. It's been really fun to see you be able to interact and interact in real time with throughout different events and things like that. It's been a lot of fun for us as the public to see you so engaged. Oh, thank you for saying that. Um, but I also need to compliment, you've been doing a really good job of, of trying to speed up these programs and really put some fire in, into these so that we are actually getting there because we've been, you know, we've been waiting. It's been, yeah, so this is, this is a challenge. Our nation has had a number of really big projects under development for a long time. Mm -hmm. We, we talk about the SLS rocket, the Orion crew capsule. Uh, we now have gateway under development. Mm -hmm. We have a landing system that we need mm -hmm. to get built that mm -hmm. we're going to be putting under contract soon yep. to go to the moon. Yeah. All of this under the Artemis program, yep. which is going to launch for the first time an American woman to the south pole of the moon, which yeah. has never happened before. Yeah. So all of this is under development. At the same time, we are very close to returning to launching American astronauts to the International Space Station, which we haven't done since 2011. Right. So all of this is under development, and that does not even include all of our science missions. Right. We've got the James Webb Space Telescope. Yeah. In 2020, we're launching the Mars 2020 mm -hmm. rover, which is going to have, for the first time, a Mars helicopter yes. flying on another <laughs> is, world. I got to see that up at JPL. That is <laughs> yeah. something. So, wow. so there, there's so much right now going on under development. Mm -hmm. Um, and NASA is being pulled in a lot of directions. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. Development is very different than operations. Mm -hmm. And when you develop things, you learn. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what you don't know until you test. Right. That's and sometimes that sets us back. Right. Um, but it's also true that once we get these programs developed and launched, uh, we're going to move into operations. Mm -hmm. And I think the American public is going to be more excited about space exploration than ever before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, because it's going to be transformational. It's already happening. It I is. mean, you have to feel that energy from the general public. That, without, yeah, without question. That average people are starting to really pay attention and really get excited for these programs. Yes, there's and, no doubt. And I have to ask you, um, you know, you've been really good about accountability again and, and timelines. So what, as far as, you know, both of these programs are, are really close. We're within... <laughs> You know, within six months, I can, I, I think for sure, yes. we're getting darn close to that. You know, what's the pressure that you're seeing that, you know, especially to hold both of these companies, uh, you know, under accountability and especially with, you know, Boeing receiving additional funds for uh, timeline assurance, you know, what, what's the extra pressure to get, to get Starliner up there to get it back on track? Is, yeah. is there, what's the actual plan? Because you mentioned a plan to get this in place. What is the yes. actual so a, a couple of things. Um, both of our uh, partners have brand new systems that we've never seen before. Uh, and now we're testing them, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. So mm -hmm. taking uh, the propulsion system of a spacecraft mm -hmm. and using it for a launch abort capability right. is, a, is a new capability. Mm -hmm. It will be transformational. It, it will save us money. Mm -hmm. It will save the American taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it will be safer yes. in the long run. In the meantime, we have a lot to learn, and we have learned. And mm -hmm. because our commercial crew partners have been doing the testing they've been doing, we, we've had some setbacks. But we are iteratively um, improving designs and capabilities. Um, but you're right. We now have those designs in place. We need to do some more testing. We need to take all of that data from the testing and make sure that we are meeting all of the margins, when you come, temperature, pressure, right. all of those things. As long as we are within adequate margins for safety mm -hmm. um, and we have the, the appropriate factors of safety built in, uh, we will be ready to launch. Now, uh, again, this is development. Yeah. So right. in these last tests, we could yeah. learn some things mm -hmm. that are, that said it, but, but we have to be prepared to, to put all of our efforts, right. both of our partners, Boeing and SpaceX, mm -hmm. put all of our efforts on achieving uh, the the highest probability of launching in the first part of next year. Right, right. Um, I don't know anything about telephones. Maybe that's a good button. 
Um, I, so I, I have to ask. Um, <laughs> How about we do this? <laughs> Someone's like on station right now. Yeah. <laughs> I just hung up with somebody live on uh, television. <laughs> on the International Space Station. They're like, yeah. oh, wait, what? Uh, no, okay, so I, I have to know. It, in general, obviously, human safety is ab- obviously absolutely number one. Has NASA maybe almost become obsessed with perfection over good enough? Like, what's because it seems like the safety st- is is through the roof now. I mean, it is a, an or- not an order of magnitude, but it is over twice. The things like the parachutes are twice as safe as what they were for the Apollo program. Uh, is- no, I, I would. Here's what I would say. Because we have been doing testing, we have learned things about safety that we didn't know before. Mm. We were taking risks with other parachutes that we did not know we were taking. Okay. So now because we have done testing, we now know what we didn't know before. Right. And so we have to make iterative changes. So you're avoiding what could have been catastrophic failures that we just got lucky enough during the Apollo era and all that stuff that we're now, because of increased testing and increased safety margins, we're seeing some of these things, so, making our astronauts safer. So, so that, that's, uh, that, that, that's true. I would also say that we have to think differently when we talk about launching American astronauts than we think about pretty much anything else. Because yeah. what happens if, if something goes wrong, and you know this, mm-hmm. the whole world stops. Yes. The president stops what he's doing, and he will have to give a speech immediately upon you know, right. a, a, you know, catastrophic failure. Right. We can't allow that to happen. Right. The, 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 the leaders of other nations around the world will stop what they are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 then, and then programs get shut down, they right. get delayed, delayed. And, and, and it hurts mm-hmm. uh, the spaceflight program in general. Mm-hmm. So uh, it is true that we want to be as safe as possible. It is also true um, that as you have seen in the testing phase, we have learned things that make us very happy that we were not mm-hmm. flying humans yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, you know, in April, there was a catastrophic failure where a capsule exploded during a launch abort, uh, launch abort static fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't have that happen with humans on board, and so it's good that we haven't yes. launched humans yet. Right. Um, but it is also true that, uh, that we need to, to return to launching humans. And mm-hmm. so we're iteratively learning what we need to learn so that we're ready. So I guess... One of the things you guys said was you're hoping to do 10 tests with these Mark III parachutes for Dragon. Is that 10, do you need 10 perfect tests in a row with all four chutes totally nominal? Is that what you're actually looking for? 100%? So, well, uh, that would be the minimum. Uh, and, wow. and, and, and remember, if, if, if the Mark III parachutes match the deployments of the Mark II parachutes, then we can say that we can qualify the system based on how it is similar to those other, other systems. Okay. Um, if what we find is that the new design um, or the new materials do not match uh, the, how the, the chutes deploy, they don't match the Mark IIs, we will need additional tests. Mm-hmm. And in fact, 10 might not be enough even if they do match. So here's what SpaceX is really good at. SpaceX is really good at rapidly failing that's a that's a that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. They can, you want to know you, you learn from failures you very know. quickly, and yeah. they're they're <laughs> they are good at just you know pushing things to the edge, making them fail, fixing them, and flying again. Fix you know it's mm-hmm. it's it's fly test fix, fly test fix, right. fly test fix, and and that is unlike any of our other contractors in right. a very positive way. Yeah, it doesn't mean the other contractors are wrong. They just do things differently. Mm-hmm. They. They qualify every subcomponent, every component uh, along the way. Right. SpaceX has a different philosophy, right. it, and 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 it 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 brings excitement. Mm-hmm. It lets us see progress, mm-hmm. and it's different. So right. we NASA likes it. We like both. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean that's why we're seeing you know SpaceX opted to do an in-flight abort test, and Boeing did not opt to do an in-flight abort test, and. That does right there immediately show there are two different philosophies. That's right. One would rather certify things on the ground and, and all the subsystems. SpaceX would rather test it in flight. That, that's exactly right. And, and, and they're different, but neither one is wrong. Right. Um, so, for example, SLS. When it rolls out on the pad for the first time, it will be a qualified human vehicle. Right. On, on the first launch. Right, right. Now, we're not going to launch it with crew on the first launch, but it will be qualified. Mm-hmm. And, of course, um, you know, Falcon and Dragon... Um, have been going through many, many iterative tests uh, for years, mm-hmm. uh, but it's all been positive. And guess what? Uh, you know, they're they're both getting to where they need to be so that we're ready to launch in these big development programs. 
Right. And speaking of development programs, if you don't mind me still continuing to with yeah. your time, this is great. Uh, so with things like Gateway, um, I, I have to ask a little bit, you know, I, I love, first off, the, that we're actually having checks written, we're having a program outlined, we're actually, see, I mean, because this is what I've wanted for a long time, is to actually have a plan and yeah. actually be going somewhere, right? Right. Instead of like, well, we're going to build this and uh, we'll see where it goes. You guys have a plan. And I'm curious if how how you can continue to see more and more commercial partnership because you've already done you've uh, hired up commercial landers to scout the moon. That's right. Um, you're going to be doing commercial uh, landers for the actual lander itself. That's right. You're still doing SLS and Orion to launch the astronauts. That's right. But how else do you see continuing to to utilize because so far the success of the commercial program has been yeah. uh, financially a very attractive option and you talk no, about that quite a no, bit. No, that's right. So uh, the gateway is the enabler of a whole host of capabilities that wouldn't exist otherwise. So. Um, you know, we, we think about what we missed from 1969 up until 2009. We missed the fact that there's hundreds of millions of tons of water ice on the South Pole of the Moon. <laughs> right. We missed it. Yeah. Well, now that we know that, we're going to go get it. We're going to mm -hmm. figure out how to utilize that water ice for life support, mm -hmm. air to breathe, water to drink, and potentially even Ref rocket fuel. Yeah, refuel. Yeah. So all of that is, is positive, but we missed it for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Um, what the Gateway does is it gives you access to more parts of the moon than ever before because it is maneuverable. It can go, it, you can build landers to have access to multiple parts of the moon all at the same time. Some of those landers could be robotic, mm -hmm. uh, some of those landers could be humans, um, and, and, and so you have a, a reusable command module in mm. orbit around the moon permanently. Remember, mm. one thing that SpaceX has, has, has shown us is that uh, reusability matters. It drives right. down cost. So we want a reusable command module. Yeah, That's what the gateway is. Right. So it's not just reusable. It'll be there for 15 years, but it's also maneuverable. So we have more access to more parts of the moon. And the other value to the gateway is that it is an enabler of a whole host of commercial applications mm -hmm. that otherwise wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. So not every company um, has the valuation of SpaceX, for example. Right but they want to have access to the moon. Right. Well, they could, they could design something, build something, and, and, and ultimately partner with NASA to get some kind of experimentation capability to the surface of the moon. Yeah. Small countries, big countries. So it, it, the, what Gateway enables you to do is it allows you to have all of these partners. Some of them would be you know, commercial companies, some of them would be international partners, mm -hmm. but they're not in the critical path to our successful moon landing in 2024. Okay. They're not in the critical path, but they can they can use the the gateway for access in a way that drives down their cost and increases their access. Okay. Um, and those are the kind of partnerships that we are very very interested in. Think of it. I like to think of it as the iPhone. Right. You know the the iPhone. Is, you know people build applications for the iPhone, and those applications have changed the world. Yeah. And it, Uber, for right, example, right? right? So these applications have absolutely changed the world. Right. Well, the gateway is a system on which you can build applications. Right. So let's talk about what those applications are. It's not just about access to the moon. Mm -hmm. Some of those applications could be deep space transports that could you know, go deeper into space mm -hmm. beyond the moon. Right. Absolutely. The gateway is evolvable, so mm -hmm. that it eventually becomes the, the, the ship to get us to Mars. Right, it could become a, a like an Aldrin cycler. That, that's thing. right, and, yeah. and Starship could be a part of that. Right, absolutely. Um, and so it is an enabler of all these different commercial capabilities, all of these applications that can where we can all do more. The other thing that Gateway does is it's in orbit around the moon, and and, and we can do missions around the moon, astrophysics in nature. So we can see on the far side of the moon, it's extremely quiet from an electromagnetic spectrum right. perspective. So in that yeah. very quiet environment on the far side of the moon, um, we can not just see back to the first light in the universe, we can see back to the dark ages after the big bang right. and before the first light. Right. And we can actually see that yeah. on the far side of the moon in a yeah. way we can't see anywhere else. Right. At right. least At near least. us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it, we, we can create astrophysics missions that are lunar orbiters mm -hmm. and then use the gateway as basically a bent pipe communication uh, node mm -hmm. so, that, so that we don't have to have massive dishes and right. massive hardware that we have to launch uh, to the moon. Right. So we can have many more astrophysics missions to see deeper into space, further back in time, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, um, and use the gateway as a tool for communications 
so that we don't we we can instead of a five hundred million dollar mission, we can do a ninety million dollar mission. Right. Then we can do a lot more yeah. missions. Right. And it's astrophysics, it's heliophysics, it's the study of the sun, uh, it's the study of deep space, but it's also space weather. Mm -hmm. And when we send astronauts to Mars, which I know we're all interested in, when we send astronauts to Mars, we have to get really smart on space weather. The the, the radiation of deep space that comes from the sun. And, and, and outside our own solar system. Um, and we can study that uh, from the moon in a way we can't do under, uh, on the International Space Station because you're under right. the magnetosphere of the Earth. Right. The moon is a key enabler. Gateway is, is, is the center node on which all of these applications can be built. And it's a critical piece of the architecture. That's, I love your enthusiasm on that. Awesome. It, really, it really shows and I really appreciate your time. Uh, we're so excited for Commercial Crew. We're so excited for everything NASA's working on. You do great work. I see you on, online all the time, and I appreciate all of, all of your coverage. Well, thank you. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. You bet. Yeah. Thank you.